Good morning, Modern Steaders. I'm sure the title of today's video is, we got a side-by-side -side for our farm. Before we get on to that, we gotta do our chores and go check the game cameras. Yesterday we found coyotes down at the game camera. <laughs> Can't wait to see what we find this morning. And the boy goats, they wanna get fed. Boy, you guys are noisy this morning. You know your food's coming. Morning. There you go. Out the new goat feeder today. Good morning, girls. Well, uh, this is your feeder. I put the most food right there for you. You get the most. It's a pretty calm and mellow feeding session for the girls. They all gotta see which the other one has. <laughs> Here's your water. You girls took no time to eat all that grain. Come on, let's go this way, we'll get some hay. You got an itch there, little pea? Come on in. Yeah, come on in. Did you lose your partner there, Tanner? Morning, chickens. Ducks. We better open up the nesting boxes before the chickens start squawking at us too much. There we go. Let's see, is anybody getting in there yet? No, not yet. All right, I'm curious to see what we got on the game cameras this time. We switched them around so we got the better camera down yonder on the left and the other one over on the right. Uh, we had the coyotes on there the other day, so let's see what we get today. Wow, I'm seeing a ton of tracks over here. Good drag mark there. Um, the ham bone's still there? Yeah, it is. It's almost down to bone, and look at all those tracks. Uh, something came in and was having a feast. I have more bones, I'll have to set up another one, because look at that. That thing is down, there's almost no meat left on it. A little bit of meat right there and in here, but man, for the most part, they've been chewing on the bones and everything. Interesting. Bunch of tracks there, 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 over there. I mean, it's just loaded everywhere. The bone right there was over here. All right, let's swap out cards. And let's see what we have. And then went up this way. All right, so this camera, I think it's better quality images and video. Swap it out. It says everything's working. We got a full battery. It's 11 degrees out. Burr. It's gonna go off in eight seconds. All right. All right, the sticks to angle it down a little bit more so we get a better view. Let's head on over to the other camera. I'll meet you there. That's a new set of tracks <clears throat> coming in down that way. The 
they haven't found this ham bone yet. Huh, I'll give it a few more days. The baby rabbit tracks. They're not gonna want that, but they're coming over checking it out. <clears throat> but nothing else yet's found it. Interesting. All right, we'll leave that camera alone. Let's head back up to the house and I'll meet you there. All right, right here, what do we have? We got something coming in right here. Where'd they go? Here they come. And the video stops. What about the next clip? Nothing. There's a bugger. Right there's a fox. Let's see what else we have. There's another fox coming in. off that way this one it took me a few minutes to see anything but watch right here let me get that out of here that bar is gonna get see it right there we got an owl coming in also see him that's pretty cool and then on this one clip right here we got a different coyote coming in and we have him on this clip no, he's on this clip. Right there. I was getting ready to turn the camera on and I started to sound like branches were gonna stop falling. There was a squirrel jumping around. Guys, that's crazy. We had a fox, a coyote, and an owl come in all at the same night. What the heck? Ah, I knew there was stuff lurking around the homestead at night, but I didn't realize there was that much every night. Ah, I keep that camera going and we'll see what we end up getting. I also think we got a bobcat or like a weasel kind of thing out there, so we're going to find out sooner than later. Now it's time for the part that you probably clicked on the video for. Yeah, are you guys ready for this? <laughs> Modern steaders, meet the mule. <laughs> When I told you I was getting a mule the other day, was this what you were thinking? <laughs> ah, we decided to get a side-by-side -side for the homestead. It was the next piece of equipment we needed. Yeah, since we moved back up to New Hampshire four and a half years ago, we've wanted a side-by-side. -side. We just kept putting it off. This last year, we've been really hemming and hiring about getting one. The side-by-side is the next piece of equipment we need on the homestead to help us make improvements here with making the pasture, getting across the creek and getting that all cleared and logged and getting all everything skidded. We'll be using the side-by-side -side for a lot of that. But we've been really contemplating which side-by-side -side to get. So I'm gonna go over why we chose the Kawasaki versus all the other side-by-sides out there and the reasons we chose it are for our own reasons. I can't say if this is the best side-by-side -side or not. We've only had it for a day now. But we'll be, we can do a further review later on. So back before we moved, I had an Articat four-wheeler and that had a Kawasaki motor in it. And man. That was the best running machine I ever had. We sold it when we moved away. One of the things I wish I would have never got rid of. So when I found out Kawasaki was making this style of mule, I was like, you know what? I had a Kawasaki motor. I know how reliable they are. And then when we were researching, we found out that Kawasaki has a three year factory warranty on their side by sides. And all other manufacturers either have a six month or a one year. So a three year warranty was huge for us. I like how it has the doors. Most side-by-side -side manufacturers don't come with doors. They have like a mesh grate over them. So I like the doors. I really like how the gas fill is right there. You can open the open the door to get easier access to it. That's gonna make for convenient fueling up. One of the other big features for this that I really like that made us make our mind up is it's a three passenger or a six passenger. And when it's a six passenger, you still have a good size dump body here. If you undo this clip here, let's go over here, and this clip on this side, you got your lever and then your seat, and boom. You have your dump pod. And then when you want to lower it down, just pull it back down. But you got a good sized dump body. Got our two handles here, got our tailgate. 
and the dump body is so 53 inches just over four feet by 24 so it's more than big enough for one bale of hay you can actually with the tailgate open and it being in this position you could have two bales of hay and then stacked on top of that the way the kawasaki is set up is you have stadium seating the back seats are higher than the front so the people in the back can see up over you and then we looked at the honda was the other one that had a five passenger with a dump body but when you had five passengers you didn't have any rear dump body area it was all gone and that was one of the big features of the kawasaki is we still have a good size dump body with it being six passenger and then when we want a full size dump body we can open this up undo this on each side that pull this forward boom boom let me lock our handles back down this arm locks here it also locks down there and there we have our dump body and now it is 43 inches by 52 by 54 so you get a good size there you have a metal floor where most other side-by-sides are plastic the only thing with this is it's painted and it's gonna scratch up I used it the other day we already got some scratches in it so I want to think of a some kind of like bed liner like a roll-on bed liner we can put in here to make that more durable and then right here the latches right here that hold the seat down also lock the dump body in place so you're gonna have those back in position then to go back to a six passenger Bam. This hook grabs down there and locks in place. Boom. Take our seat, fold our seat forward, and then our latches that lock the dump body in place lock the seat down. I really wanted a side by side that was a dual cab but I wanted one that could convert from being a five or a six passenger down to a two or a three passenger that we didn't have to have the dual cab all the time for our purposes. A lot of the times when we're going out, we're gonna have people with us. If we're not, I'm gonna have my camera gear and a bunch of other gear so I can put that here. And then if I got chainsaws or anything else, we still have our bed. Like I was saying, we looked at quite a few models. We looked at the Polaris and the Can-Am, but those ones, they were a double cab all the time with a good size bed on the back. And they were a lot longer than the Mule. And I didn't like that for our, we, I like the small shorter one. That way if Gina wants to drive this, it's not as long. We looked at, the next one we looked at was the Honda, which converts from a three to a five passenger. But the seats fold down into the dump body. So to me, you can get a bunch of crap in your seats but then when you had a five passenger you didn't have any storage so if we wanted to use it for multi-purpose like you do on a homestead like you want to work you want tools here and you want to use stuff in the back it wasn't it didn't really make sense for us i did like about how the honda has, has like a transmission like a car the mule and then like the polaris they have a belt driven transmission it's a cvt model where the Honda and the Can-Am have a real transmission like a car. That was the couple of things I liked about those. But the biggest fe selling feature on the Kawasaki for us was right here. Oh, we still have a two foot bed by a four and a half foot bed. And then we can have a four foot bed by a four and a, by four and a half foot bed and still have a three seater versus a six seater. We got the Mule Pro FXT Ranch Edition, which comes with a front bumper, dual headlights. We have a halogen headlight here. LED headlight here. It's got a 4,500 pound worn winch on it. I really like having that. I like the bumper. It's got different tires. They're not as aggressive as the other ones. So this way for like the pasture and stuff, they won't tear it up as much. 
We've got the alloy rims. It's got electric power steering. One of the things I really like is a lot of this is built a lot ruggeder than the other ones and it's more metal. We got all inner metal fenders. Under here, we got a lot of metal skid plates already on here. There's a plastic skid plate down the center. We have the independent suspension front and rear. We have 10 and a, I think it's like 10.3 inches of ground clearance. We got a nice aluminum skid plate here. It comes with a roof. We added on a polycarbonate windshield with, with a few vents in it. This way, so in the summertime, you can have some cooler air blowing on you. I really like the trailer hitch it comes with. My, the one from our pickup truck can fit right in here. It's got the place where you can hook your chains. It's got rear tail lights. The handles to get in the door only on the outside. It's not on the inside. It's got a little like ball and socket latch. We do have a tilt steering wheel. We have our two wheel drive, four wheel drive selection, rear lockers. We have different switches for our headlights. We have on, off, and high beam for our halogen and then our LED lights, our winch control. Turn the key on. Let's us know if we're in four wheel drive, two wheel drive. Let us know the mileage, how fast we're going. And we do have an hour meter. Trip A, trip B, hours. So there's two hours on it right there. One of the things I wish Kawasaki did do instead of having the like cigarette lighter style, if they would have had like a USB connector. Most things nowadays being in 2019 don't use that adapter anymore. It also comes with a worn wench controller that we can plug in right here on the dash. Boom. We can be outside of the mule and operating the winch, which is going to come in really handy if you get stuck or if you're trying to pull a log. It has a glove box for storage. Cubby hole here, here, here. And then we do have two cup holders, one here and one there, which is nice. The front bench seat's got a nice contoured seat to it with your backrests. And the rear seat is just a flat seat in the back. And we have two more power outlets right back here in the back. A random fact, Kawasaki's are made in Nebraska. Thought that was pretty interesting. We purchased ours from our local Kawasaki dealership in Littleton, Littleton Motorsports. They were great, so I want to thank those guys. Let's take it for a ride and I'll show you how it goes. You want to ride up? should sit right there. It does have a governor on it, so if you're not buckled up, it won't let you ride. You like that safety feature, huh? Yeah. Funny the different colors from being LED in the halogens. to go across the creek right here and we can get on that side of our property 
and pick up all the down trees and all the brush and we can get that so we can get more access to over there we can get our pigs and our goats over there and we'll have more usable land so this being as rough as it is we can't get the Kubota back here right now we get the camera set up Ooh, and I'll show you how rough it is first ever side-by-side -side I've ever owned. I've had four-wheelers and snow machines in the past. The Articat four-wheeler I had had, a, I think, a 3,000-pound worn winch, and we used to do so much stuff with that four-wheeler. We used it as a skidder. We would skid some huge logs. We had our old property. There was about an acre and a half, two acres of land that we cleared using that four-wheeler. So I know the side-by-side -side is going to be getting a lot of use this coming spring, but what are some things we should do to it? Is there things we need to do if you have a side-by-side? -side? Are there stuff that you've done to yours that you like that comes in handy for using it for work or just for fun? Leave it in the comments down below and let me know. I have some broth I made. We need a name for the mule. Do we call it the mule or do we come up with another name? Leave it in the comments down below. I know you guys are gonna come up with a great name. You ladies lay all your eggs. Okay, let's speed you down that away. We got coyotes and foxes and hawks coming in, ladies. So you better make sure you get into NYC tonight. I don't got nothing for you. Not yet. I'll get you hay in a few minutes. I better shut the gate. I did. What are you ladies looking for? Three eggs. They're slacking. Let's close it off before I forget. <sighs> Oh, that's normal for this time of the year. I just don't like it. What are you doing, Hope? All the animals are full of spunk this afternoon. Guys, don't take off that way. You guys full of spunk too? Huh? You full of it? Go ahead. You don't like that second cut hay as much as the last batch? It's what we have for now. You gotta eat it and enjoy it. You don't mind it, Zeke. 
They know I'm in here getting hay. Can you hear them knocking on the door? We hear you, Hope. I hear you. I knew it was you. Come on, we'll go this way. How are you liking the new feeder? No, we're not putting food in that. We're gonna give you hay. Oh, we're going this way. We're going that way. And some of them like eating up here. So there we go. Our friend and fellow YouTuber Justin Rhodes is doing a 12 day of Christmas giveaway. I just only remembered to announce it in today's video, but we put out a free video in the 12 days of giving. So I'm going to put a link in that video description down below. And I went over 10, 10 of our top 10 homesteading slash carpentry skills that I think everybody should know on the homestead. Uh, guys, I don't know about you, but I am excited to see what we're going to be getting done this spring with the mule. It's going to be so much stuff we can do. Like a lot of y'all been saying in the comments, we've been outgrowing that Kubota for quite a while now. So it's nice to upgrade and the two of them are going to work so well side by side. Let me know what you think we should name it. We got to come up with a good name for this one or we can just keep calling it the mule. I can't get over that we still had a coyote, a fox and an owl all come in one night. I know we've been hearing a lot of noises down on the homestead at night, but I would have never thought in one night they would all came in. Hope you guys have had a blessed holiday season so far and I hope it keeps getting better and better for you. I know I'm looking forward to 2020. 2019 was an amazing year and it's so exciting to see what all this is going to bring for everybody in their homestead endeavors. So thanks for coming along on our journey with us, guys. You're a huge blessing to us in our homestead. And we'll see you right back here in the next video at Lumna Acres.